Colombian Supremo at 4.22. French Roast, 4.16. Ooh, something freeze-dried at 4.01. How come people don't make cappuccinos in the morning, Tess? They gotta go to work, honey. They don't have time. <laughs> but there's nothing but time. Everybody doesn't know that. I'm on my way. I want to be there and ready. Oh, come on. No! Why can't the guys just meet me there? It's too early. What do you mean? It's only seven. Why do they do it, Tess? They invent clocks, and then they become slaves to them. They make up little jobs and then they become prisoners to them. They, they build all sorts of roads going nowhere and they spend all their time going up and down and back and forth. And sometimes, you know, I could just shake them. Well, in a nice way, I mean, of course. You've been hitting that coffee a little too hard lately, huh? Look, yep. if he's dirty, he's going down and I'm not going to wait around to read about it. He's the governor. Ron. Yep. Oh. Ron. Yes. You know I'm right. I don't think I could do a nine-to-five. I don't think she could either. That young woman is a slave to more than her clock and a prisoner to more than her job. And I'm afraid she doesn't even need a car to drive herself to where she's gone. going to nail this guy one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, never put off till tomorrow when you get exposed today, right? <laughs> As your mother always says, right? Oh, please, Ron, give me a break. Oh, yeah, 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 just wait a minute. Oh. Ron, so look, okay, Ron, yeah. I'm about five minutes away, we'll discuss it then, but I'm telling you, I'm right. Yeah. All right, you'll see. You'll see, I know what I'm talking about, Ron. I'll come in, we'll chat a little. You'll tell me what you want me to cover, and then I'll go on and do what I want anyway, okay? Now put Kenny on so I can rake him over the usual cold. Kenny? Hey, Kenny, my man, let me tell you what you did wrong. That's Deborah Willis, your assignment. Is she what you call a driven woman? Well, the problem with most driven people is that they make the mistake of thinking they're doing the driving. That's how accidents happen. Is anything ever really an accident, Tess? What difference does it make? You're going to have to handle it when it happens. And this one is bound to happen. City Council detailing a plan to conduct a full-scale investigation into the Platte River waste dumping by Colorado real estate developer Andrew Considine. That's the news this morning. Have a great day and tune in at noon, four, and six for the day's developing events on Q News. Good day. What do you do? Run on the lights? Oh, cut the small talk. I'm just passing through. Yeah? What's the hurry? Bad guys don't need as much sleep as good guys. That's why good guys have to work harder. Hey, great job on a flat rubber story. Hey, that's why I get the medium-sized bucks. Ah, uh, that was a compliment. Thanks, but I would much rather have an update on the governor. Well, he's going to pardon two dozen white-collar cons before his term ends tonight at midnight. Says who? Informed sources. That's good enough for me. Come on, let's get rolling. Hey, wait a minute. Slow down once in a while and take your new producer with you. Look, I want to get that governor on the steps before... What? Hello. I'm Monica. Monica, this is Deborah Willis. Hi, Monica. I didn't think we had a new producer in the budget. Well, me neither, but the brass upstairs say here she is, so I guess we did. Well, I would much rather have the money, but, um, welcome to QZoo. We have more questions than answers, but, hey, we try. Thank you. I've seen your work. It's very good. Yeah, New York's gonna be knocking on her door soon. Not soon enough. You ready to get to Capitol Hill and kick some butt? I suppose I am. Don't forget to ride. Why should these men be pardoned? 
Well, it's my opinion they were victims of an overzealous prosecutor, District Attorney Frank Randolph. And your opinion has nothing to do with the fact that Randolph opposed your re-election? <laughs> no, politics has never interfered with my sense of justice. Now, if you'll excuse me. Cut, Freddy. You know, I'm getting a little old for this, Deb. Next time, you're going to have to go a little easy on me. If he's out of office as of tomorrow, what does he mean by next time? Freddy, keep rolling. Governor, please, just one more question. What are your future plans in politics, and will there be a next time, Governor? Never say never, okay? When and if Governor Watson's name next appears on a ballot, voters will have their say on his decision to pardon these convicted felons, no matter how starched and white their collars may be. It's his right. It's your law. And as my mother always says, never ask how sausages or laws are made, unless you're willing to change the recipe. This is Deborah Willis for Channel 5 News. Shouldn't that be like my mother always says? As is grammatically correct. But nobody says that. My mother does. She sounds like a very special lady, her mother. No one's ever even met her. Oh. Hey, aren't you that lady on TV who busts the system? And aren't you that cop who is the system? Hey. 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 Leo, meet Monica. She's new in town, and she's my new producer. Monica Leo, the best detective in Denver. How do you do? Just fine. Welcome to God's country. Well, I suppose it started out that way. Well, that's a good point. She ought to do great in this job. Coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Actually, I'm uh, trying to cut down. Our the usual, too. You got it, Leo. Now, you come and do uh, Sal's retirement party tomorrow night. Uh, I don't know, Leo. You never know what the news will bring. Well, what about that boyfriend of yours? You don't have time for him, too? We make time for each other. We jog every night. Oh, jogging. Sounds romantic. You know, um, I think he wants to get married. Well, what's wrong with that? Work them in, can you? Monica, you married? No. Oh, well, don't get me wrong. Anybody who wants a career ought to go for it. But when it's over, I'd rather end up with a gold watch and a hand to hold instead of just the gold watch. Mm. I can't imagine anyone would want to stick around with me that long. Well, you got a point there. <laughs> Leo, you're supposed to be on my side. <gasps> hey, let's get these cavatillos. She never stops, does she? No, she's so busy listening to her head, she never listens to her heart. <laughs> she gonna wear that boyfriend out. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if she's running to something or from something. From? Every time she tries to slow down, she hears this voice that says, you'll never be good enough, you'll never be smart enough, you'll never be pretty enough, and you'll never deserve the love of a good man. It's an ugly voice, and it runs even faster than her feet. All right, all right, we're gonna break six minutes. It's gonna be a new record. Look, I don't care about a record. Stop, stop. Here, take it. Now, come here. Now, kiss me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't just walk out of the studio and let it go so fast. Sorry. Look at that. I'm not in love with that woman. Why is everybody on my case? I'm busy. I like it that way. Okay. Okay. Still on for tomorrow night, right? What's the plan? Meet me at 6 and Welton on top of the parking garage roof. 8 o'clock, okay? Why? Two years ago, I fixed your rear flat tire and introduced myself. <laughs> Call me sentimental. Our anniversary? Yeah. George, you want to... Shh. And tomorrow's special. Okay. Okay, tomorrow. But what do you say we get one more mile in before it gets dark? Come on, let's go. Mm gonna get dark a lot sooner than she thinks. What do you mean? Look. Henry? What's the angel of death doing here? Well, he's not here yet, but he's getting closer. Hey, hey, it's Deborah, look. Oh, sorry. It's 6.40 and I'm on my way in. Right. See you in the 
editing room look? Be there or be fired. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh -huh. Bye. Retirement, not this uh, gold watch needle point crap. Oh, damn it. Look at this. I need to call a news crew out here. Fire hydrant just to blast in the reservoir below. Look at all this water being wasted. I tell you, look, I gotta go right now. I'll call you back when I'm human, if that is possible. I am the power of my I am universe. The power of my universe. I am the power in my universe. I am the power in my universe. I am the key to my success. I am the key to my success. I am all that I need. I am need. all that I need. I am in the driver's seat. I am in the driver's seat. So where is Monica? Well, come with me. I'll tell you, you hire someone, you give them a chance when nobody else will, and the next thing they know, they repay your faith by showing up to work any damn time they feel like it. Now, we need a producer if we're going to do the news. I mean, I need a producer. I need Monica. Yeah. Well, gee, hi, Monica. Look, we need you to get down here. We... Yeah, what? Well, what is it? How long ago? Are the other stations there? Okay, okay, you stay put. Monica just called. She's at the hospital. Bobby Garcia was just brought in. He was hit by a hit-and-run driver. Bobby Garcia, that kid? Oh, no. Bobby, that's his name. You don't know who Bobby Garcia is? 
dead. You really ought to stick around for the sports wrap-up once in a while. The kid is the best high school baseball player in the history of his state. Sports says uh, he was skipping college and going right to the major leagues. Yeah, he was just brought in. There's no word yet on the extent. How did Monica get there so fast? Because she's good. Didn't I just say that? What, are you still here? Get to the hospital. Ron, I mean, do you really think that's a good story? It was just uh, some kid got hit by a car. That kid is from a family of five. His dad died two years ago. His mother is a hairdresser. The kid's a sure millionaire until he steps off the wrong curve. Deborah, this is the American dream gone all wrong. I get down there. We're all set. Have you seen Deborah? I haven't seen her yet. Oh, there she is. Oh, thanks. Hello. We're already here, but it's a bit of a feeding frenzy. It always is. And at this hour, there are more questions than answers. Will Bobby Garcia recover from his injuries? Who was the driver of the vehicle, and why did they run? And who made the phone call to 911? A good Samaritan passing by with the driver of the vehicle that left a young man fighting for his life. The patient has uh, suffered head traumas as a result of the accident. He's uh, listening in critical condition at this time. Thank you, that's... Can you give us a statement, Mrs. Garcia? No, not now, please. Mrs. Garcia, have you had a chance to talk to your son? Please, yet? just let me through. She said, please. Deborah Willis, you... I'll talk to you. I don't get it. His mother just picks you for an exclusive? Out of the whole reporter pool? Yeah. He is me. Mrs. Garcia said she talked to Deborah because Deborah shows respect for her mother. <laughs> oh, as your mother always says, you can't, can't buy respect. respect. You know, I don't even think she has a mother. I think she makes this up all by herself. Oh, this is it. I didn't raise Bobby to be a baseball player. It's what he does, it's not who he is. I raised him to be a happy man with respect for others, to love himself, God, and his family. His family is at home right now. in the case of Bobby Garcia, the teenage baseball star who was injured this morning by a hit-and-run driver. Garcia is considered the top pro prospect. Recently, he spoke with Channel 5 sportscaster Star Callen about his life as a future superstar. I just want to do whatever's best for the team and then go pro. I want to buy a mom a house, you know, with fruit trees. When, you know how you see on TV, we can just reach right over, pick them off and eat them. That'd be so cool. She deserves it. I mean, putting up with me. Garcia is still unconscious at this hour, and police ask that anyone with any information regarding this tragedy to please come forward. Steve? Thanks, Deborah. It's a horrible thing. Just horrible. I think it's time to turn to a lighter note. And in so doing, we'll turn to the local fishing those onions? Mm -mm. I just like them straight. Thank you very much. Uh, it's somebody with sweaty palms. Mm -hmm. Hey. Well, your palms are sweaty. It's a sweaty world, Leo. But you never sweat. Oh! That's my beeper. I've been beeped. Uh, I've never been beeped before. Excuse me. So, um... What you got on the uh, Garcia accident? Accident? You said anything about an accident? Tried felony hit and run. Felony? 
Well, you can't hit somebody on the street and leave them there. Whoever did it ought to be shot. But, uh, what if it were an accident? Even if it were, it became a crime the minute she drove away. She? A woman made the call right down the street here and then took off. Fifty bucks says that's who did it. And we'll catch her, all right. Oh, yeah, they brought out the big guns to lead this investigation. Yeah? Who? Me. You. I volunteer. This one I do on my own time. Oh, by the way, I got your message this morning, and we are buying Sour Gold Watch. Also, a uh, gift certificate to that sports uh, magazine. Hey, Leo. You got to make a speech about Sally. Me? I got nothing from here. Hey, everybody. Listen up. Now, I wasn't supposed to be the one to stand up for Sal, but it looks like I'm the only one who can stand up. <laughs> Tonight, Sal's a great cop. Tomorrow, he won't be a great cop anymore, but he'll still be a great man. Here's to Sal. Don't station. Bobby may be getting worse, and they need us to do a follow-up. Sorry. Hi, I'm Deborah Willis. Can you tell me anything about Bobby Garcia? Yeah, he needs blood. You got some? His blood type is very rare. We're putting out a call for AB negative. That's my blood type, AB negative. Well, fancy that. How about you, honey? Blood banks and always use some extra. I, I don't know that I can give blood. Oh, I bet you can. I bet your blood is purer than the driven snow. You don't faint, do you? You uh, really never gave blood before? No, but there's a lot of things I haven't done. Not me. I've done everything I set out to do. Well, almost. I need a little sleeve rolling up action, ladies. Uh, which arm do you want to use? Um, it doesn't matter. There you go. Now, here's some orange juice. Drink it all, honey. It'll stop you from getting dizzy. And you make sure she drinks every drop. You want to know about these scars on my wrist? I was 16. A classic overachiever. I just, I just had to be perfect. I got my first day minus and uh, I went crazy. I don't see how it could be that simple. But hey, I got over trying to be perfect. Can't you tell? as if you have a pretty remarkable mother, too. I mean, that phrase of yours. As my mother always says. <laughs> yeah, she's really something else. Very wise and wonderful. She say things like, you won't get the blue ribbon for running half the race. Or, you're a waste of space if you're not in first place. But somehow, she really had a way of inspire me to be my best your best or hers well that's what always made it interesting I'm trying to figure that one out is that what happened you couldn't hey what's going on 
on. Some guy over on Dexter's got his bosses, some customer's hostage, a couple of kids. One officer down, maybe one of the kids. Nobody can get to him. I'll call the station. You get the address. Right. Now, the station told me you were here. What's going on? Are you hurt? No, I'm covering the story. Look, I, I couldn't meet you tonight. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. You just stood me up and you ain't even called? George, I don't have time to talk about it now. You don't have time. Hey, Grind, Grind, look, I'm heading over to Dexter and... 30 seconds. 30 seconds to Dexter. How's the situation? Yeah, I'm on it. Look, Deborah, we need to talk. Garcia's holding steady. I'm on my way right now. Monica's here, too. Ron's gonna call a crew. Call the desk, get him to pull the hostage tape from July. Deborah, stop! Look, you want me to just assume that we'll talk sometime? Or that you'll never have time. I just want you to make this clear to me. George, not now. Yes, Deborah, now. The extension is 35. L look. Yes, what now. What's that dinner about? What dinner? You tonight on top of the parking lot. I saw it. You were there? George, I don't want to get married. I didn't ask you, did I? But you were going to. Look, let me make it easy for you. I am not the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. I think I have some say in that. Deborah! What did you do to your car? What? It looked like somebody ran into you. How could you not notice this? Monica, you all set? All set. Come on, get it. Let's go. Damn it. Deborah, will you stop running away from me? Deborah! Team. The crew's all here. We're cutting in for a live feed in two minutes. Oh. Hey, you're earning your paycheck tonight, huh? Yeah, so are you. Well, the party was getting pretty maudlin anyway. So what's going on? Guy got fired, came back, was drinking all day, says he's going to kill himself and everybody else. Kids first, he says. Uh, do you have a name? Yeah, we do, but please don't use it, okay? If he's in there watching himself on TV, hearing his name right now could blow it. Oh, of course, I understand. 60 seconds, guys. What? Just to show you I'm all hard. I have something and you can break it. Too. Oh, thanks, Lou. I've got a lead on that hit and run. Oh, yeah? That's great. Yeah, we know a few things for sure. One, we're looking for a white car. We've got some paint off, some trash cans. It looks like pay dirt. And we heard some tape playing in the background. Um, anything else? Deborah, I'm yeah, sorry. We've got to go. Okay. And that's five, four, three, two... This is Deborah Willis, live with Channel 5Q News. We're here at 32nd and Dexter, where a 30-year-old man is holding several employees and customers hostage. Some of these hostages appear to be children. Uh, a police officer has been shot and is in critical condition. Some of these hostages appear to be children. I'm sorry, God. You're a very serious It's Deborah. We're live. Um, uh, we'll uh, continue to keep you updated throughout the evening. Um, this has been a special report from Channel 5 Q News. And this is Monica. This is Monica, and uh, back to the studio. here mother I, i'm sorry to barge in on you like this i just i just needed to see you oh well look at my new hybrid what do you think of the size of that bloom it's very lovely mother yes but it's not it's not quite i don't know there's something i don't know something 
missing. Mother. I'm in trouble. If that boyfriend of yours has dumped you, I'm sorry. I know how it hurts. But quite frankly, I'm relieved because I never thought he was capable of handling all your moods. Now, this one... Mother, please! What is the matter? I've been in an accident. What kind of accident? I hit somebody with my car. Oh, it was a kid. <laughs> it was a kid. He's in the hospital. He's gone, Mother God. I don't know if he's gonna pull through. Oh, God, Mother. But the, the worst... The worst part is... I love the seat of the accident. Oh, dear God. God. I just ran away. I just... I just left him laying there. Oh, oh Mommy, I'm so scared, Mommy. I'm... Deborah, how could you do this thing? I raised you to take full responsibility for your actions. What did I always say about responsibility? If I don't take the responsibility, who will? You're always putting those silly little words into my mouth on television. As my mother always said, you make me sound so ridiculous, like little Mary Sunshine. You know, if you really wanted to do something very constructive, I wish you would stop quoting me and start listening to me. Well, I guess someone has to take responsibility. This is without a doubt the most ridiculous stunt you have ever pulled. And tell me, why is it I only see you when you need something? Hopper? Yes, it's me, it's Grace. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour. I'm afraid we've run into a very sticky little family situation here. Yes, it's Deborah. Of course. It's very disappointing, I know. But then again, <laughs> it's nothing new to you and me. She actually saw me. It only happens right near the end, you know. All along, I thought you were here for Bobby. Hey, so did I. I knew the thought this morning that she'd be the one I'd be leaving with tonight. with Deborah at all and I can't interfere when it matters most. Who says you can't interfere? Where did you read that? The rules are very clear, Tess. You can't force a human to choose life for herself. Otherwise, what kind of life would that be? That's right. It's got to be her choice. But something tells me she doesn't think she's got a choice. <laughs> The only thing she can hear is that ugly voice inside her head. I'm afraid there's no turning back now. Deborah. 
What are you doing here? I want you to put that down. Leave me alone. Put that down, Deborah. This is no way to escape what happened today. I know about the voice inside your head. The voice you heard after you hit Bobby Garcia. I know it's the voice that made you run away, and it's the same voice that's telling you to do this terrible thing now. You're always driving and driving and driving, Deborah, but the voice will always catch up with you until you stop and listen. Only then will you finally hear that the voice is lying. days of your life. No one will want to have anything to do with you. Losers do things like this, Debbie. Not winners. Losers do things like this, Deborah. Not winners. As my mother always said. Oh, God. I think I'm losing my mind. No, Deborah. You're just starting to find it. it Maybe hard for you to understand, Deborah, but I'm an angel. And everything that has happened here, God has allowed me to show you for a reason. He's going to kill me. No, but he's afraid you're going to kill yourself. You did something wrong, Deborah. You walked away from someone who needed your help. Bobby Garcia. Yes. But 15 years ago, you also walked away from yourself. You may not realize it, but the night you tried to take your own life, you actually succeeded. I didn't die. No, but the best part of you did. The part of you that's human, that's Deborah. And all that remained was the part that couldn't allow anything less than perfect to survive. The perfect little girl always making sure that she did just as her mother always said. Oh, Deborah. You have the right to be less than perfect. Oh, God. I just... I just left him laying in the street. That wasn't me. It's not like... Like I was afraid of uh, going to jail or losing my job. It's, it's just that I was afraid that that no one would love you anymore. I can't do it right all the time. I know that. God knows that. How can He blame you for being human when He made you human, huh? God really loves me. Yes. There's not a thing you can do about it. Leo. I, um, 
I hope I didn't wake you. No, I wasn't sleeping. I was hoping you'd come by. And I was, um, just kind of hoping that you wouldn't have to. The, um, Bobby Garcia case, the other piece of evidence you needed, um, the tape playing in the background of that 911 call. Yeah. This is what you heard. I knew you wouldn't let me down. It's gonna be okay, kiddo. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, I know. I just need one favor. Sure. Mrs. Garcia. Miss Willis. You didn't have to. Come back all the way again. That nurse told me that you gave blood to my body. They say he's gonna be just fine. He woke up an hour ago, hungry for pizza. <laughs> if you hadn't have shown up when you did, they said that. Miss Garcia. There's something. Very good at this, you know? I'm working on it. That was an unconditional compliment, and you just take it. Thank you, Henry, very much. What are you still doing around here? Nothing. You know, everybody's gonna live today. So, uh, how about some coffee? Ah, angel after my own heart, eh? former KQIS news anchor, has entered a plea of guilty to the charge of leaving the scene of an accident. Her license was revoked and she was sentenced to 18 months probation and six months community service, a lighter sentence than expected due in part to the statement of support from the mother of hit-and-run victim Bobby Garcia. I'm sorry. Sign. There's one. Break for snakes. That's not the kind of sign I'm talking about. 